Hello everyone, it's Benny here, and in this video, I'm starting a brand new Minecraft series. And this one is all about designing a Minecraft computer. And some people who might be familiar with some of my other videos might be saying, Whoa, 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 wait, wait, just a second there. You already have this series on your channel. It's called Building a Minecraft Computer. So, what what gives? Why are you doing the whole thing over again? And, well, no, that's not what hap is happening here at all. And I, the best way I can really explain this is a little, little saying. And it goes something like this. Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. In my Building a Minecraft Computer tutorial series, I showed you how to build a Minecraft computer. I went to a bit over about the parts that went into it. Hopefully everyone understood how it was and my reasoning behind some of the decisions I made at least. But overall it was really an introductory type series. It was aimed at beginners, it was aimed at people who'd never worked with this type of stuff before. And in this series I will be teaching you how to fish. This will not be as much of a tutorial series. We won't be just sitting down watching me say, okay, this is where you place the block, set it up like this, and it's just gonna work. Just trust me. We're gonna t get a bit of the just trust me out of this here and go to uh, how you can design it because, well, this thing is, let's just face it, computers are a really, really deep and expansive field. There's just so much to them. And if you've gone and done that series, and you might not have been satisfied with it, then you might want to know how to design your own. That's what this is going to be about. It's going to teach you the different things that go into it, how to completely re-engineer them to do whatever you could possibly want, and how to set up a computer in ways that are extremely fast and effective. And I realize this series might not be everyone's cup of tea, so this series, I know, will not be for everyone. So, um, yeah. And without further ado, I think we should go ahead and uh, get started. So, just one moment, and... Hey everyone, we're back, and now we're going to be talking about design. So what on earth is design? Well, when you're designing something, you're building something that is fit for a certain purpose. That purpose might be you want it to be really small. You might want we're pretty much always going to have it do something, and you might want some output at some specific location. You might want inputs at some specific location. You might want it to uh, move at a specific speed for some reason, and you might want some more abstract thing out of it. But the whole purpose of design is building something with a, s a specific purpose or set of purposes in mind. That's what all design is. It's nothing too head-busting, I, I hope, anyways. So, yeah. But the three big things you're looking for when you're designing something is you want it to be, you want it to be small, you want it to be fast, and you want it to be functional. So, We'll be talking about all of those in the series. So first off, we'll need some way of measuring them because we're going to be wanting to compare them in certain ways and figuring out, hey, this one seems to suit my purposes best. Let's go with this one over some of our list of choices. And we're going to be able to invent our own choices. And that's one of the cool things about designing th things. If you don't like something, you can say, huh. I reject this idea and substitute my own. And there you go. Brand new design. And maybe it works better, maybe it sucks, who knows. But anyways, back on topic. Let's deal with function. The way you typically deal with function in simple redstone devices, keep in mind, simple redstone devices, so not CPUs, not GPUs, basically anything that is that doesn't involve memory is usually this function is usually designated with something called a truth table. What a truth table is is a list of every possible input and gives the corresponding outputs. So it's sort of like just a list. It's like a table. 
So for example, the NOT gate, it has one input, so it only has two possible combinations, either 0 or 1, and each we have an output. So input 0, output 1, input 1, output 0. That's a NOT gate. Okay, so, oh, that's the truth table for a NOT gate. Nothing spectacularly hard there. If I wanted to turn this into a NAND gate, which is done like this, now we have two inputs, so that gives us a total of four possible combinations, because remember, it's the two to the power of number of inputs thing. So, we have two inputs. So, zero, zero, that's our first two inputs. We get one, one, zero, we get one, zero, one, we get one, 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 we get zero. So that's just the basics of how truth tables work. Hopefully they're nothing spectacularly hard. They're a whole bunch easier to see in a written form, but uh, as you can see, I'm in Minecraft. I can't really write anything out. Unless I wanted to, like, just draw it in, out in blocks, but I'm not going to do that. So next thing. So we've covered the functionality. Well, let's cover speed. Now, the way Minecraft works, every time you use a torch or you use a repeater, that takes one tick. And one tick, for your most purposes, is just the equivalent of one repeater delay. So the time it takes from the redstone power to get from here to there, that's one tick. As you can see, it's pretty fast. Two ticks, more noticeable. Three ticks, even more noticeable. One tick is generally it's close to instantaneous, but it's still noticeable. So there's eight ticks, five ticks, four tick, or six ticks, seven ticks. So there's just a sample of different tick lengths. And typically if you want to just measure something out, you'll set up a line repeater and use it like, a bit like tally marks. So for example, a knot gate, that's one torch, so one repeater, so it's one tick. The NAND gate, which is like this. Now this is where it gets interesting, when you have multiple inputs. So, when you have multiple inputs, you will have to take the long. You'll have to trace it through for each input and take whichever one's the longest. In this case, both are one tick. So this, the NAND gate, in this case, is still a one tick gate. But if we want to do something more advanced, like an AND gate, which is like this. Oh, here we go. We have. Uh, freeze the power here. We go one, two. So there's two to torches. That's two ticks. One, two. They're both the same in this case. So there's nothing spectacular. But if we wanted to do something weird like this, I have absolutely no idea why on earth you would do this. But oh well. So this is a different design of AND gate, and just to prove to you it still works. There you go. But this is a lot, it's a lot slower. Because you have one, two, three, four, and here you have one, two. So this is a four tick AND gate, because that's the longest input. So that's how you measure speed in the design. Hopefully that's all cleared up. And, yeah. So now, only thing left to do, and I really should have left that up because that would have been a great example of this, but oh well. Now I'll just load in an XOR gate. So XOR2, and paste. This is just going to be my example for size. So size, there's multiple ways of assessing the size of something. I have my little XOR gate loaded as an example. Typically you look on from where the inputs are. The, way from this, the dimension this way, that's the width of it. So the XOR gate, for example, three blocks wide. This direction, that's the height. So XOR gate, three blocks high. And now you ha have the depth. That's going this way. This is a depth. And it's three blocks deep. Because remember, torches do count as a block. If, they're on the if they are hanging out, they still count as a block. So this happens to be a perfect three by three cube in terms of size. You could have a different si thing that looked like this. And even though, so this is too wide, too hot, 
too deep, excuse me, too high. And one, two, three, four, five, six high, wide. And that is size. Now there's another way of looking at it, and that's volumetric space. That's the absolute way if, of looking at the general size of something. So this is three by three, so that's a total of 20. Is that 27? Yeah, it's 27. So it's a total of 27 in volumetric space. The way you do that is just multiply with height and depth. And that's how you get space. So, um, yeah, that's, that's basically the three ways you look at design. Nothing too mind-bending just yet, I hope. But yeah, so if you'll excuse me for just a second and possibly the end of the video if this is getting too long.